I started into the mortgage world and right as we like started growing, brought in a few partners because we saw that, man, there's an opportunity to go even bigger. We're all growing it together. And it was, it was a cool experience while it was going well. Hiring people as fast as we could get. We had call center. We had, we were bringing new people in all the time. We were growing when it felt like everyone else was shrinking. And the enthusiasm was there because we all saw the, the potential. We all saw the growth, right? And then regulations were changing and personalities were starting to come through. So things unraveled in like from more than one place. Within a matter of months, it became, we're out of cash flow, we're out of business. There's not money to pay back investors. And that, that's where the real pain happened. It's one thing to have to like close down a business. It's another thing where people feel that they're owed money. And it was, it was at the depths of that kind of turmoil. When the company had closed, we'd finally like stopped trying to make it work. Partners had all moved on to other things. And I was left to like deal with the aftermath. We, we had just found out, well, we knew we were pregnant with our fourth child. The morning we were heading to the ultrasound to find out the gender, I just checked the bank account before we left. And it was negative 17,000. And what had happened is one of the partners had told the sales team to, to call these former customers and just do chargebacks. And so even ones that had had services rendered, even ones that were happy, they were just sabotaging, right? So that money came out of the business account or after a few weeks, it then the bank took it all out of the personal account. The last glimmer of hope that I'd had that I was gonna get through this had been snuffed out. And I, when I saw it that morning, I was like, I'm not at zero. I'm underground. But I remember as we drove to that appointment, we had to put gas in the car. And I had 17 bucks on a PayPal card. When I put that four or five gallons of gas, now I had no resources. I had to very rapidly create completely alternate solutions, right? At that moment, I realized I had to be more resourceful. That's what led me to finally read for our work week to launch my first site and then my second site, which eventually took off and started making an income. And so I was able to use the website income to feed the family. But then in order to move forward, we still had to, about a year later, file bankruptcy and finally draw the line in the sand where the past was gonna be the past. It devastated me, shattered me. I, I'm decent at making websites. I had built a lot over the years, so I knew the basics. I was looking for a product that I knew had some sales velocity, that had some margin, so that I could make some money pretty quickly. And I remember I stayed up one night and built out the website and then turned on some ads. I, I literally used a 10 cent dot info domain that was on sale and a Google AdWords credit that Google sends you to like, hey, try Google AdWords for a hundred bucks. I didn't even have money to buy a good domain. I didn't have money for ads. I had some time and that it was like from midnight to 4 a.m. Kids are finally asleep, wife's asleep, and I'm just sitting there stressing about money and I'm like, I'm gonna, every night I'll work on a solution until we figure one out. And remember, I got that site built, I wrote the, the copy for the ads, I got the ads live on Google and I just crashed, went to sleep. Woke up and I checked my phone to see what happened, you know, overnight, checked PayPal, and I made $200 net profit. It was the first time that glimmer, that hope that had been snuffed out was back. I was like, okay, if I can do that on that site at the beginning, I think I can do something with this. So within 30 days, I'd, I'd replaced my income. I didn't know enough. I'd never done e-commerce marketing. I'd never done that. So I didn't know what I didn't know, but I could try to optimize what I could see. So just between ads and one blog that was willing to share a, a, an image with a coupon code, was able to take the site to five figures in the first month. It, it really was a masterclass in that whole industry. We ended up being in retailers, owning our own li like licenses and formulas, really learning the entire process. And it became the, the testing ground for anything we wanted to do and launch other sites and build other things. And I sold that brand a couple years ago, but since then have built over 200 brands. One of the first things that happened when the store started doing pretty well. In the early days, I had it to where every time someone bought on the store, it sent a notification to my phone, like a cash register. Cha -ching. And I remember this one time we were on a road trip. We had the kids all in the, in the minivan, cruising the Western United States. And every time it would cha-ching, like the whole van would cheer. And because it meant like we can keep vacationing, like we're good. It gave us this freedom that it's like, we're making money even when dad's just 
driving up the freeway. First and most obvious thing that e-commerce did is help me realize the power that your website and your brand should work 24 seven. You, the, own, the business owner, the entrepreneur, should not. So it got to a point where we knew, based on ad spend, based on what we were doing, we knew how much money we were gonna make each month. And, and we could even see forward a few months, right? And that was different than other businesses I'd been in where every single month was like filling a pipeline. And it was every day there was cash flow, every single day. We're at a point where you cannot ignore e-commerce anymore. 10 years ago, you could say, hey, we, we can build our entire business with just one vertical. We'll let other people do the e-commerce. Five years ago, three years ago, you could say, hey, we're just gonna let Amazon handle our e-commerce. You can't do it anymore. One, Amazon owns the marketplace. They are Amazon. That you could go to sleep, own, you know, being the number one search result for in your industry, you could wake up and Amazon having put their own branded product and replaced you. And it happens every single day. You have the same thing with, if you're selling into wholesalers, you're selling into the major big box stores, the same thing happens. Like you're battling shelf space. You're, you're, you're hoping for the next purchase order. If you can start owning the customer experience, building the relationship with the customer, having the customer come back to you to purchase, you build a, an asset in your business that you have more control over than any other division. And so for me, whatever business someone's in, whatever their primary model is, e-commerce has to become a focus. What I love helping brands do and I love helping people do is diversify their revenue and add a whole new profit center into their business. When I started, I did 100% by myself. I had a book and I followed the recipe of the four hour work week, which got me to day two of the business. From that point on, I just guessed and just tried and just tried to figure it out. And I. In hindsight, I realized how many resources and people and teams there were that I could have hired, consulted with, asked for advice, had I just asked that exact question, what do you wish you would have done, right? There's a bunch of things I would have done that I only know now in retrospect. It's a wise man who learns from his mistakes. It's a wiser man who learns from the mistakes of others. Learn from my mistakes and my successes so that you can get there faster.